What's up, guys? So I was just making videos for a course that I am in the process of making. But you know what? I think that this is highly relevant. I think it's worth my time to make, okay? Today is May 4th, 2018. Okay, there's a lot of people talking about this and that. Uh, and I'll just mention it. Uh, yeah, Kanye West talking about, he made a comment about slavery. And all these black people are like, oh, you don't, da 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 da. Dude, here's what I'm gonna tell y'all. We were all slaves, bro, whether you understand that or not. And look, I wanna kinda focus on making a lot of videos about investing because I feel like it's a lot safer. Me saying this stuff, I don't know, I don't want everybody to get too mad at me. <laughs> but look, dude, we are all slaves. I'm gonna explain to you how, dude. Has everything to do with monetary manipulation. Whether you know it or not, dude, we are all slaves. Dude, we have had a hundred years of economic pros or progress jacked from us. We're still burning coal to generate electricity like cavemen. I know I look like a caveman, but uh, yeah, uh, we are still, <laughs> We are still burning coal to generate electricity. This is 100 years after Nikola Tesla, for one. There's been plenty of inventors who have invented all types of different you know, ways to generate electricity. But yeah, Nikola Tesla, for one, over 100 years ago, invented ways to just literally suck energy out of the ether, out of the energy, the infinite energy field that we just, that we're floating in. He invented technology where you can literally suck the energy out of the ether, out of the freaking, the field that we exist in. And we're still, we're, and people want to talk about global warming. You know, no, dude, this is all, we're slaves, dude. We're, this is all basically sabotage. I'm gonna be honest, it's sabotage. Why are we still using oil? Because they can control it. Why are we still using coal? Because they can control it. Why, a lot of things, why are people working nine to five jobs all day? Because they've manipulated the economy to that point. Why, why are you afraid every day that you, know, you might not be able to pay rent? You gotta go to work here, you might da da da, you know, you're like basically a slave to your freaking, these corporations. You're afraid you're gonna lose your job if you don't go to work today, if you don't do exactly as they say. Your whole life depends on it. Modern day slavery, it's not a joke. So all these people talking about blah, 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 dude. We're all fucked, dude, like slaves. Like, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, yeah, you got black people talking about, oh man, Connie, you don't understand, man. You don't understand the struggle for us black people. Dude, we are all fucked over right now. We are all being fucked over. It ain't about black people, it ain't about white people, it ain't about Chinese people, Mexican people, nothing like that. Look, it's it's well beyond that, dude. So I'm gonna try to explain it to you and uh, let's get it. It starts with corporatism. It starts with corporatism and then it's also the value of the dollar and inflation. Gosh, this is gonna be a freaking whammy to explain. Okay, it starts with fractional reserve banking. What is fractional reserve banking? It's a scam. Fractional reserve banking is where uh, banks literally, they hold on to a little bit of gold and they print receipts. Oh gosh, this is gonna be a long video. Let me try to narrow it down easier. Uh, money is being created by banks through a process called fractional reserve banking. You can watch a video that I made about fractional reserve banking. Other people have made videos too, it's not just me. Okay, they're literally creating money. People borrow this money uh, for whatever they want. They might pay it back, they might not. Then they buy something with it. They trade that money for something to somebody. They hold on to it debt free. Then they trade it for something else. So on and so forth. There's what I call this monetary food chain, okay? The money's created, goes to this guy. He trades it, this guy has it debt free and it goes into the economy. There's what I call monetary food chain, and then also this, this trickle down inflation. So in the monetary food chain, these guys just have a bunch of money and they can afford stuff. They'll go to this guy and trade it for what he has. He'll go and trade that money for what he has and so on and so forth. And so this money slowly trickles into the economy. It's trickle down inflation. So while it, this new money is coming in, these people with this new money are competing with the old, the, all the old money that's in the economy already. And, uh, you know, that's, they're, they're gonna out-compete all that old money and then eventually price is gonna go up. So these people with all this old money, you know, they're going to, uh, you know, they're not gonna be able to afford stuff because all these people are bidding up prices. The price of everything is so high. 
that's why you have to work a nine to five job all day and you know, you can barely keep a roof over your head because there's new money's coming into the economy and you know, bidding up the price of everything, the cost of living is super high. That's what continues to happen. You know, inflation is what a lot of people want to call it. Uh, inflation is really just the increase in the money supply. This bank is just, banks just, it's fractionals are banking. You gotta understand that process and I might explain it later, but I don't feel like I'm ready to say it. But generally speaking, it's this trickle down inflation. Inflation is just the increase in the money supply and eventually that increase in the money is going to lead to higher prices because these people are competing with all these other people, you know, for goods and services, bidding up the price of everything, you know, putting in higher bids, competing by offering more and more money. So the prices go up naturally. And uh, you can see that with college tuition, you know, people will come, go to the bank, get as much money as the colleges, you know, ask for, and then all these other people will try to save money for tuition, you know, they can't afford that. And the uh, same thing with everything else in the economy too. And so really it's this money creation that is the, the beginning of it all. And uh, you know, people up here, they might be well off. They still have to do some type of you know, work or offer some type of good or service to get the money when this dude borrows it. This guy, he's in debt. He might never get that money back. He might never pay it back. Uh, they, the bank might confiscate his property and then sell it to somebody to get some money back. That's you know, what they do. And uh, so he might be screwed, he might not be. He might get the money back eventually, either way. Money's coming in uh, constantly. And right now, it's, a, it's basically perpetual debt. Right now, the United States, uh, the United States is like this person. The United States is just a government who is borrowing money from the, it issues treasury bonds and it borrows money from people, whoever it might be. Eventually, the Federal Reserve, which is a privately owned bank, ends up buying a lot of these treasury bonds. So the government is issuing treasury bonds. Uh, you know, uh, banks will buy them sometimes. They'll literally trade, I'll put a dollar sign. Yeah, but the, the banks will literally trade money. Uh, I mean, there's a lot to, I don't know, see, here's one thing I don't know about banking. I don't know if, if and when they create the money so this guy can uh, do something with it. If this guy brings that money back, does this bank just have it to do whatever they want with it or what? I don't know that part. So either way, I know that they have money and they're gonna buy these treasury bonds. Eventually when they buy the treasury bonds, the Federal Reserve will buy it from them. You know, uh, the Federal Reserve literally just prints money to buy it, I know that. The Federal Reserve will literally just print money and buy these treasury bonds, not directly, but indirectly from the bank but we can just leave it like that for now. And uh, perpetual debt, you know, uh, $21 trillion right now. Uh, it's all part of the same thing. Money's coming in the government. The government's like this guy, getting it, spending on something, those people who get it, you know, uh, they'll, they'll get the trickle down inflation. Get it, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to lose you here. I'm not trying to get lost either. But uh, generally speaking, yeah. The government indirectly is going to get money from the bank and then boom, same thing. Uh, like I just explained, treasury bonds, they're going to buy it. The government's going to get money directly. Treasury bonds in that mix. Uh, I just wanted to show you the Federal Reserve part because it's relevant. But it's perpetual debt, $21 trillion in debt. I guess I'll draw a freaking treasury bond right here. Uh, yeah, and they get money comes back in the same way, $21 trillion, this perpetual debt. As this money comes in and prices go higher, is there a billion? No, not trillion. Amount of trillion? No, not yet. Uh, yeah, as prices go higher, they'll have to borrow more money to afford stuff, and it's just perpetual. It's stupid, it's perpetual, and all this new money coming in is always competing with the old money, all these people at the bottom, the price of living is going up, they can't afford nothing. You know, these people right here are getting the money direct off the printing press or whatever, they, they might be doing all right, you know, but all these other people, stressing. That's modern day slavery, dude. Uh, what else could I explain? Like I said, the Federal Reserve plays a huge part in this because they are literally just printing money. And they are a privately owned bank, if you did not know that. And uh, they'll eventually buy the treasury bonds and the bank has more. See, the Federal Reserve is going to print the money, buy the treasury bonds from the bank who traded money already to the government who then spends it. So they're holding on to a treasury bond at this point that they traded money for. And the Federal Reserve, 
the Federal Reserve literally just gonna print money to buy the Treasury bonds, and they're holding on to a lot of the government debt, uh, the Treasury bonds, and uh, just perpetual. They just keep printing money, print, 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 print. These Treasury bonds eventually get in there, and uh, twenty-one trillion dollars worth of Treasury bonds, apparently that uh, something like that, twenty-one trillion dollars in debt. That's what's going on, and uh, yeah. So all that new money coming in is outcompeting all the old money. Price of living goes up. We're all basically slaves to this system because we're being outcompeted with all this new money that's being created. Dude, it's impossible to live. And so, yeah, we gotta work in corporations and we gotta worry about losing our job because we could barely afford to keep a roof over our head and stuff. You know, it's uh, it's modern day slavery, dude. Uh, we all work for money, and these people are literally just printing it. That's what it comes down to. And uh, we're all slaves, dude. We're all being, I'm not going to say we're all slaves, but we're all kind of being screwed over. Uh, that's what Occupy Wall Street was talking about. That's what, uh, yeah, that's pretty much what Occupy Wall Street was talking about. And uh, Ron Paul talked about that in the Fed, stuff like that. Uh, it's pretty basic. It's pretty, it really is. Uh, yeah, when everybody's always talking about, oh, I'm so blah, 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 I'm black and my life sucks and this and that. Dude, everybody's being screwed over, bro. It's not just you. Believe me. Uh, yeah, so until we change this all, until we, you know, get over, you know, stop using banker money that's just, you know, created out of thin air, so many people like to say, until we start using other things with money, you know, we're going to be subjected to this, uh, you know, increase in the supply. And just one more lesson, just to, just to add it. You know, there's no such thing as universally accepted money. There's only, you know, money that certain groups of people are willing to trade their stuff for. So only within these groups, that's what this bracket is for, only within these groups is any type of money, you know, universally accepted. You cannot bring your dollar to China uh, and expect people to accept it. But uh, you can bring your dollar or whatever money you have to anybody who is willing to trade their stuff for that money and uh, expect them to be willing to trade their stuff for it, you know? So any type of money, there's a group of people that are willing to trade their stuff for it, you know? Uh, there happens to be a huge group at the moment that uses Federal Reserve notes, and uh, hopefully that's probably gonna go down very soon. When it does, you know, it's a basic function of supply and demand. The, the value of the dollar is going to go down very low, possibly to like, uh, you got to bring a whole wheelbarrow full of money in to a grocery store to buy a loaf of bread. Eventually, it'll be so low that you might not even be able to pay back $21 trillion. But in the meantime, we've all been subjected to this trickle down inflation and we've been slaves. And, uh, you know, the key to it all to get out of this modern day slavery is for us to use money that's not going to be inflated, like this, just create out thin air, because at the end of the day, they're just printing money uh, and buying stuff. And we're, we're, we're trading our goods, services, and labor for, for this money that they just print out of nowhere. And uh, the only way to get out of that situation, use good money. And uh, you know, there's plenty of things we can use with money. And I, this, is, this is a key point with a lot of my economic, uh, videos. It's, it's trying to get y'all to understand that we can use many, many different things as money. You know, they can, we can, if I owned a grocery store, I could accept gold, silver, Bitcoin, uh, random fiat currencies. I could accept anything. And trade, I could accept, shit, trade me your cat for some, for my dog. I don't know. You could trade whatever you want. That's what the economy is. It's trading. Uh, if you're trading goods or services for money, you're still just trading. If this is gold, uh, you're still just trading. Uh, the whole point is you're gonna trade what you have for the gold or whatever money it is, you know, that uh, you're using, and then you're gonna trade that money for somebody else's good or service. So, like I said, there's a group of people, and uh, you know, whatever money you trade for, you know, eventually you're trying to get what you want, right? Something else, and uh, you, know, you trade it for one type of money, you can trade that money for a different type of money, just like you gotta do with the dollar to different. You know, currencies around the world. Uh, at the end of the day, yeah, we, we just got to get off of quit using these bankers' money because these bankers' monies are these, these fiat currencies that are just printed out of nowhere. They're toxic. The values go down because they just print so much. It's supply and demand. Increasing the supply, you know, the, the, the value's going to go down. Be, uh, 
more money per item, you know, which means higher prices, you could say, or you know, less item per unit of money. You know, the value of money, the relative value of money to stuff is gonna go down, you know, if they just increase the supply. And I explained this in a lot of videos. Uh, so yeah, that's key to getting out of this modern day slavery is for us to start using other things with money. And, you know, quit using toxic money that's just printed out of nowhere like crazy. You know, we are slaves to the money because at the end of the day, we work in, we trade our goods and services for money. If you people are just printing it, they're basically our freaking daddies, you know what I mean? Like, please daddy, let me I'll do my chores if you give me some money. Okay, I got you. They're just printing, they don't do nothing for it. It's different if, if you know, if you're using a different type of money that's natural, let's say, there's a, there's a lot to this, but if you're using a different type of money that's natural, you know, that somebody had to work for to get their hands on, you know, that's not wrong because they work to get their hands on that money. You know, uh, there could be a lot of manipulation there. You know, certain monies could already have the whole entire supply corner and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, generally speaking, if we start adopting new money, using new money, you know, multiple different types of money. Like I said, if I'm in the grocery store, I could trade it for gold, silver, Bitcoin, other stuff. I could accept multiple things of money. If I didn't want to hold on to it for long, I just trade, you know, exchange it for a different type of money. Simple. Uh, that's very simple stuff. And uh, I've already proposed my idea for, it's very basic. Instead of the government issuing treasure bonds, have the government issue money. And I would not say the federal government, I would say more or less like local state governments and stuff like that, have every state print their own money to pay for roads, public works and stuff like that. That way, if somebody's gonna be printing money and people are gonna be trading their, their labor for that money, then that labor might as well be, be put towards things that are going to benefit everybody in society, so. Modern day slavery, and uh, yeah, it's not just you. It's not just you, I promise you, it's not just you. We're all being fucked over, so. It's the 99%, we're the 99%. Bankers are normal, they're, they're the 1%, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's not just you, believe me. Uh, yeah, dude, so I sympathize with everybody who's working in nine to five, grinding every day, I really do. That's what I'm trying to teach everybody. I'm trying to teach people, yo, you need to be using good money. Wait, if we're using bankers, toxic, like I said, you know, I think I explained enough. I think you guys got the gist. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.